I'm Dr. Michael O'Brook, one of the current laser research fellows over at the Harvard MGH and Wellman team uh, with Rox Anderson. And hi, I'm, I'm Rox Anderson. I'm a professor at Harvard Medical School in Dermatology, and I run this thing called the Wellman Center, which is the largest uh, in the world, looking at how light affects us and biology of humans uh, who evolved under that big star uh, called the sun. It's, it's a very wide range of things that we do. Well, thank you very much for joining on uh, this Aslam's interview here today, Rox. It's great to see you in my home state of California and a little warmer than Boston, but still beautiful over here. And a humongous congratulations to you on the Horace Furumoto Distinguished Innovators Award. Congratulations. Well, Tell thank, me about it. Yeah, thank you, Michael. You know, I, I'll start with a story. I knew Horace Furumoto very well when I was a first year medical student and I thought maybe we could use lasers to treat children with port wine stains. Um, Horace was uh, running a, a company called Candela that uh, had the ability to make pulse dye lasers. And so uh, together with a guy named Jim Shaw, Horace and I built the first one. Yeah. And it, it was, uh, so I, I know Horace and fortunately when he passed away, that was a, a big loss. So part of what this award means to me personally is is the honorific name there of, of Horace Furumoto, whose efforts really made a huge difference in our field. Um, I, the other thing I'd say is that these awards are really not about me at all. Um, <laughs> you know, the, uh, the, it's an inspiration, I think, for young people to see um, uh, uh, what can be accomplished, you know? Um, and I don't wanna, you know, make it uh, seem like I've done so much, but I think that over the years, you know, we've invented these things and you, you figure out how to help people. The whole enterprise is about helping people. That's what biomedical stuff is about. And if you just keep in mind that you love that, the goal, and you stay on it, then, you know, that's where you get these. I think when you're young, you don't really see the connection there. So yeah. you might be a medical or graduate student and you're just worried about your thesis and what's what's your <laughs> next job is gonna be. Yeah. But the big job is making a difference. And so it's a, it's a total pleasure to be uh, the recipient of it this year. Well, it's fantastic and absolutely spot on. It's, it's challenging to see things longer term. And I think you've always thought in things in very big problems, very long-term goals and long-term planning. And you know, the story with Horace uh, starting Candela and the first pulse dye laser on there together with you, and it's a beautiful one. So I'm sure that was a ton of work that you guys did together. I know you've shared a couple personal stories on there that I've very much appreciated. Um, Talk to me a little bit more about how you like to focus on those bigger problems and on these longer term goals of really helping people and solving things worth solving. Well, that's uh, you've, you've just said it very well yourself, Michael. The, the, uh, it starts with knowing a problem worth solving and caring about it. So the whole, uh, and, and actually, you know, it's interesting, you sort of make an assumption or attack big problems. I don't see it that way at all. Yeah. It, uh, it, you start with a very tangible, potentially solvable uh, problem that has an impact on human lives. And um, I've learned over the years that the understanding the problem deeply is far more important to success than what your particular solution attempt of the day has to be. So you have to fall in love with the problem. It's like getting married, yeah. right? You, you fall in love, you go on a date with the problem, you try to understand the problem, you live with the problem. Your first attempts may fail miserably. And uh, the scientist in me loves to fail uh, because that's when you learn. If you did, if everything we did uh, worked swimmingly, we wouldn't learn a damn thing. Absolutely. Uh, swear a little bit on I this. think so, okay. I think so. So, um, and, and uh, it's often the second or third strategy that actually works. Yeah. So it's the problem, the primacy of getting the problem at, at heart. Yeah. Um, and then lo and behold, once you solve a problem, you find that it has lots of cousins. Yeah. So whatever the, the working um, thing that works is, the thing that is useful, 
uh, you can often reconfigure that uh, strategy or technology. That, that's actually a lot of what's going on in my lab right now, is yeah. reconfiguring the solutions of the past to be the solutions of the future. Yeah. So it's fun. Well, as you said too, as you navigate through those problems, those failures, it opens your mind and ideas to different things that might not have been the original uh, goal, but that pathway unfolds before you. So from uh, an innovative standpoint, I know you and I like to chat about Einstein. And if you gave me 24 hours to solve a problem, I'd spend the first 23 thinking about the problem and the last hour working on the solution. Yeah, well, yeah. so Albert basically was, it's one of his quotes that, and, and what, it, what he was referring to is just what I said, that yeah. understanding the problem uh, from many different points of view, when, it, it, I, I think that the solutions often present themselves, right? So, and people people get hung up on this. They they uh, will be enamored of a particular uh, technology or bio, biomedical res, biological response pathway, the gene of the day kind yeah. of thing. And um, it's important to be enamored of that and be have a large armamentarium of knowledge to solve problems. But uh, some people will jump in too early with, with whatever comes to mind. I think you gotta live with understanding that problem. That's what old Albert was saying, is, <laughs> is <laughs> don't just do the first thing that comes to mind. It's, yeah. it, it's, it's actually let the problem be the guide. So, yeah, I like that. Let the problem be the guide. Yeah, and we, in, like in the ASLMS, here we are at this meeting with, yeah. with incredibly uh, inspiring new technologies, uh, lasers, and so forth. In, in medicine, if you can use, let's say, fractional lasers to improve scars, well, yeah. scars are a problem throughout the whole body. And I, I believe that, it, so I'm a dermatologist, the society here in, you know, includes all specialties, but there's a lot of emphasis on dermatology, plastic yeah. surgery here. We're just the gateway to problem solving in the whole body. And uh, one of the cool things about ASLMS is that it is agnostic about what specialty you work in. So it welcomes, you know, ophthalmology and dentistry and everything else yeah. in, into the fold. I think we uh, need to uh, sort of foster that intellectual diversity at this meeting. It's, it's one of the real things that makes it click. Yeah, well, that's, that's a beautiful part about this conference and a lot of the intermingling of different specialties and bringing in different ideas, different perspectives, sort of uh, when you change the way you look at things, the things that you look at change in a yeah. way. And yeah. they bring in those different perspectives that we might not have on our immediate radar. So I guess on that note, uh, how would you recommend ASLMS in general for the conference over here? Oh, I think this is a very successful conference. Yeah. I'm, I'm slightly biased because my wife was the program chair. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, and, she, and I think Fernanda did a fantastic job. Wonderful. But um, uh, one thing I'll say about this conference is that, you know, this is a post-COVID antidote yeah. to, you know, too many Zoom meetings. Yes. And, uh, the opportunity for people to actually, you know, get together and brainstorm in hallways and, and so forth. That's true for any well-run conference, and, but it, it, the, the way this one is put together allows that, it embraces it. You're not like sitting in a lecture hall all day. Yeah. Um, and uh, the other thing I think we're very seeing here is the actual emergence of some new technologies in dermatology, the ability to treat acne with yeah. lasers. That, that's one of my uh, little children, um, <laughs> but it, it's amplified by many other people's effort. Yeah. And you're seeing now that coming out. Um, I, I love the diagnostics that we're mm -hmm. seeing here. Um, it's at a, in, in a way, it's sort of an early stage, um, but the combination of therapeutics and di energy-based uh, therapeutics with diagnostics, I, I, I foresee an entire era of um, robots uh, coming our way, yeah. and they're not going to look like some science fiction <laughs> robot guy. I mean, it's... it's Not it's, Elon Musk's robots no, no, over here. <laughs> I don't need a self-driving laser, yeah. <laughs> but the, the, uh, the, you know, the combination of diagnostics and, and yeah. energy-based therapeutics to do targeting. So, yeah. you know, our bodies, we're, you're not a bag of uniform water, right? Yeah. I mean, so the the 
the best diagnostics, whether, excuse me, the best therapeutics, whether they be energy-based or drugs, they have specific targets. And uh, the, for the energy-based uh, technologies, which this conference is all about, um, guiding the energy is such an important new strategy. Yeah. And it's really different than almost everything we have already. So I, I see the it, it, this year in particular some rising tide. Very nice. Yeah, which is good. Well, it's very exciting. And now that the ancillary technologies have kind of caught up with robotics, with imaging, with some of the artificial and augmented intelligence overlays that we can do with lasers and energy based devices, I mean, the targeting with that, the sky is the limit. There really is no limit. So. Well, there's, there's some quantum limit. Uh, Touche. <laughs> yeah, well, I always, the physics is always the, the critical importance on there. So. Well, no, <laughs> The physics is always there, but it's, um, uh, you know, the, I, so I studied physics long ago and the pure physics is very theoretical yeah. and stuff like that, but you, you can only solve the wave equation for a single uh, element of the, of the, of the yeah. periodic chart, and that's hydrogen. Um, so the physicist's definition of helium is one electron too many. <laughs> right. I mean, <laughs> the physics fades away as yeah. the, as the complexity of biology and medicine comes in. It's still there, yeah. but I, I, what I love is the unpredictability yeah. of what we do, and yeah. uh, it, it's much more fun. Exactly. <laughs> well, that that's what makes this a beautiful event, a beautiful conference, and a great discussion together. This is an honor, and it's a true privilege to work with you, and it's been really one of the greatest joys of my life. So thank you very much, Rox, for well, thank you, everything Michael. that you do. And thank you. And uh, thank you. It, it takes a village and you're part of it. So well, thank you. We're doing well. Thank you very much. Yep. Great discussion. <laughs>